Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the 2020 Springboro High School Marching Band. Everyone please stand as the band performs the Springboro High School alma mater. We are just about ready for kickoff. Beaver Creek, or Springboro won the toss and elected to defer to the second half, so Beaver Creek will get the ball first. Ready here for week number two as both teams try to try to even out that 0-1 start, get back on the winning ways here. So Lucas, what do you think we could expect out of Beaver Creek on their first drive? Well, I believe you're going to expect to see a lot of uh, running the ball and that triple off of confidence that they like to run. Kickoff is fielded. Well, it's actually through the back of the end zone. 
and Beaver Creek's going to start at the 20 for their first drive of the game. It'll be first and 10, Beaver Creek at their own 20 yard line. That's going to lead out the senior, Jack Barnett. He's going to lead the Beavers on their first offensive possession. Barnett going to line up in shotgun formation. Receiver is going to go motion from bottom to top, and it's going to be, oh, Barnett's going to keep it, and he's going to run for about a, maybe a gain of one. Tackled there first by, look like, number Jack nine, Barnett Michael Etheridge. And Logan Manez for the Panthers with that split tackle. Also in on the play, number four, Andrew Harrison. Gain of one for Barnett on the QB run up the middle. <clears throat> Barnett's going to hand it off to the left side. Going to be number 32, Bryce Solberg. Or that's actually Etten. Metzinger with a tackle for the Panthers. Third down here, you would expect. A pass here coming from the pan or from the Beavers. They're going to hand it right off to ETN again. And he might get to the 25, but it's going to be fourth down, and Beaver Creek's going to be forced to punt here as they go three and out on their first possession. And like I said, they're going to run that ball, that triple option, triple option offense that they love to run. You might be surprised to see them pass the ball all game. Yeah, we hinted about it in the first or in our pregame. Maybe they just threw the ball so much just because they found themselves down quick and in a hurry against the Vikings in week one. Justin Hawker will do the punting. Hawker on to punt for the Beavers. And a flag. Penalty flag on the play prior to the snap. Looks like a motion call against Beaver Creek. And they'll try it again. Ball so, start. Offense, number 54. Repeat, fourth down. That was a false start called on number 54, Alex Neal. Hopefully this snap for this punt could be a little better as that last one was kind of into the ground. It was a great recovery by Beaver Creek's punter. Better punt, or better snap, low punt. And it's gonna be kicked out kick of bounds out at of about bounds, the, the 40. That sets Springboro's offense up. And there, there's a flag position. on the play. Roughing the kicker, 15 yards, first down. That's going to be a first down for the Beavers because Springboro roughed the kicker. I guess that's one way to keep your drive alive. Let's see if uh, their offense will switch up anymore, if they're just going to keep giving that ball off to Etna. It's going to be first down at the 32. Barnett and shotgun with Ed 10 next to him. Barnett's going to go straight back. Going to look to the left. He's rolling and he's almost tackled. Looked like by number 69 for the Panthers, but he needed to get rid of that ball sooner. That could have ended up bad for Beaver Creek. Well, that was their first pass attempt. Let's see how many more they can attempt throughout this game. And you saw Beaver Creek, or Springboro, didn't really react to the pass well. I mean, they their linemen blew through the offensive line of the Beavers. So, I mean, it was that rushed the quarterback's throw a little bit, but if he could have set and thrown that, I think he could have had a first down. I would agree. ETN's going to go in motion. Barnett back to pass. They're going to throw a screen to number 45, and it is incomplete. Pass falls incomplete. 
that was spring for our defensive to, line is just that's just rushing Barnett like crazy. Yeah, that's three straight plays that the Panthers have been able to get into the backfield and disrupt the timing of Barnett. Because if if he could have planted his foot and thrown that that halfback screen could have worked coming out of the backfield. Beaver Creek's offense wants this pass is passing to work. That offensive line really needs to step up. They're going to have one to the top and three to the bottom. Barnett's back to pass. Quick out to, and it's intercepted by the Panthers. Intercepted by number nine, Barnett's Michael Etheridge. by number nine, Michael Etheridge. And that, that's what happens when your offensive line one cannot protect ten. you. You're forced to rush a throw. And Barnett couldn't get set. He was on the run when he threw that one and threw it right into the hands of Springboro. And Mikey Etheridge will take that interception all day long for his first of the season. And like you said, every every pass attempt that Barnett had was his very rush as that Springboro defensive line pounced on him quick. Apple and arm booster in the back. Now you're going to see Mikey Apple going to line up in shotgun arm booster to his left. Apple back to pass. He's going to throw it. And it is caught Apple in the end zone. Deep. What a catch. My number three, a Titan Case. What a connection there. A 32 yard touchdown pass catch for Titan Case. We saw his name last week in the store in the scorebook. He has four carries for 44 yards and three touchdowns. He has one catch for 32 yards and a touchdown already. Well, if you're a spring bro, what a way to start this game. Your defense gets a stop with an interception and then the very first play on the offensive side is a touchdown. Now you're gonna see the four on to attempt the extra point for the Panthers. Snaps good, holds good, kick is up, and kick is good as DePore puts the Panthers up seven to nothing. 9-14 left in the first quarter. But we'll end up talking about DePore later in the game, but I'm going to say real quick, last week he had eight punts against Northmont for a total of 346 yards. He, he pinned them inside the 26 times and had two touchbacks. So DePore definitely can flip the field position if you're the Panthers. Real estate red zone. So now Springboro on to kick off. What do you think Beaver Creek has to adjust here on this second drive? Well, I just think that offensive line just needs really to, really needs to step up. And if when they run the ball, create those holes because when they did run, their running back just had nowhere to go. And then when they tried to pass the ball, they let that Springboro, Springboro defensive line just pretty much let them right in and force Barnett to rush his pass and couldn't get a good pass attempt off. DePore on to kick off for the Panthers. And I'm going to assume that this one's going to be in the back of the end zone like the first one. And it is. Once again, DePore's kick goes. And, and that's something that Springboro has been able to. They've always had an excellent kicker with them. We'll go starting back at least five years ago, four years ago. They had Charlie Cubander. He was the, he's now the kicker for Northmont. Then they had Connor Luxick. He set the record for or tied the record for most field goals attempted in a row and made with 13. And then DePore the last two years has been his nearly perfect. I think he's only missed one extra point and two field goals in his attempts. Let's see if this Beaver Creek offense can get something going here. We'll go two running backs in the backfield, and they're going to hand it off. No, actually, they kept it and pitched it out to number two, Addison Culpepper. Culpepper the that confused me. I thought they handed it off. Might be enough for a first down. And it is enough for a first down. And if, and if Beaver Creek's line can block like that to be able to run those fakes, Springboro's defense is going to have to adjust to this. You see the Beavers are going to line up the same way, and they're going to do the same play, but Barnett's going to keep it. 
for about a gain of three on the play. Banks on there with the tackle for the Panthers. And this is something we haven't seen from the Beavers over the last few years. They're not taking the full play clock to get ready. Yeah, they are running a little bit of a, almost a, not a hurry up offense, but. Injury timeout. And actually it's gonna be an injury timeout on the field. As that looks like it might be That is Culpepper, the one who just had the first down run. He's going to run off the field under his own power. So maybe just some cramps here Culpepper early in week number two. Appears to be okay. And we'll get back to action here at Deer Flight Field at Watkins Stadium, second down and nine. From so it'll be second and nine after the injury timeout here for the Panthers. Barnett in the backfield with ATN next to him, and they're actually going to sub in late. Number five, Travis Terrell. He's going to line up in the slot. Barnett's going to go back to pass. Throws a quick out to Terrell, and it's incomplete. Barnett and I don't know if Barnett felt falls Mikey Etheridge's breath on his neck because Etheridge was there for the sack if he could have. Uh, that Springboro defensive line was there enough very quickly. I think that's the quickest they've gotten through their game so far. It's going to be third down and nine. If they want to have success in this passing game, that, that offensive line needs to step up. Russell's going to go in motion, or Culpepper's going to go in motion. Barnett throws it out, and it is complete to Terrell. Terrell will be tackled at about the 36. It'll be a few yards short of the first down. And now, if you're Beaver Creek, you're 0-1 down 7-0 early. Do you gamble here? I think it. I think they're too far into Springboro territory to gamble here, and they're being fourth and three. If they were to go for it here and not get it, that sets Springboro up in great field territory, just like they had in their previous offensive drive. Justin Hopper on to punt for the Beavers. But remember, Springboro roughed them up the last time and they got a free first down out of it. I think they might be a little bit more cautious That's this time. It's a high punt. And they're actually going to fake it. Hawker's going to run to the sideline. And he will have the first down for the Beavers. What a gutsy call. Hawker keeps it. And he's able to get the first down for the Panthers. What a Gutsy call, like you said there, by Nick Black of the Beavers. I don't know if it was busted. It looked like it could have been Tackle busted because it was a high hit. snap. Was 16, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, yeah, that snap was pretty high, and that that defender was right there. If he would have made a, if he would have tried to get that punt off, I feel like it would have gotten blocked. But you know, either way, the Beavers got a first down there, and they're ready to start up this drive. So they've gotten two first downs on two fourth down attempts here. One by penalty, and one by a punter keeper. Now you're going to see Barnett. He's going to go back to pass. A little bit blocking this time, better by the Beavers line. And he's going to throw it, and it is call or caught by number five, Terrell, close to midfield. It's number 14, Pierce Doyle. Actually, it was 14, Pierce Doyle with the catch there for the Beavers. It's a great catch as it was thrown a little bit behind him. And Barnett was almost struck down by a few. Panthers in the backfield. Barnett is going to hand it off to ETN up the middle. ETN busts through, and he will have a first down and in That's to in Panthers here. territory at the 47. Now this offensive drive from the previous one is looking a lot better. That offensive line is really creating those holes for that running back. In the as the, and these passing attempts, they've gotten some good support. Yeah, the last two pass attempts, he has gotten at least a little bit better blocking. Still had to scramble to the left but, or to the right, but maybe that's just how he feels like he can throw is on the run. Hand off to number one, Devin Garns, and he 
tries to cut back and will actually lose two yards on the play. Like number one, Garns, the ball carrier, wrapped up by number 95. Looked like he tried to plant and try and turn back to the right side of the field, but lost his footing. Lost of a yard on the play. It'll be second down and 11 now from the 48. So we approach six minutes left in the first quarter. Barnett in the backfield. Barnett's gonna go straight back to drop. There's a quick out and it's incomplete intended to Barnett's Terrell on the sideline. Coverage on the play provided by number 39. So it's gonna be third Alex and Brown. 11 right at midfield. I think depending on what you can get here on third down, Beaver Creek might go forward again on fourth down. Barnett is going to go straight back, throws it out to Etienne on the sideline, and he might get about a gain of three on the play out to the 45. Barnett was able to get the ball away to Etchen. He takes the ball about to the 45-yard line. Now it's going to be back fourth and about feet. eight, and we'll see what the Beavers do Barnett here. For defense. It'll set up a fourth down at seven now from the 45. And you're going to see Hawker, the punter, come in. We'll call it fourth and eight. But, I mean, we didn't think they were going to go for it last time deeper in their own territory. And they ended up. Low snap. Hawker picks it up almost off the ground. And it's trailing, and it goes out of bounds right at about the... We'll see where the ref marks it, but it looked like at about the 10. Now we haven't gotten much to see of this Springboro offense as their last drive was only one play that resulted in a touchdown. Right, one play and it was a 32 yard pass out to Titan Case. The Reds fans out there, they won the first and This uh, Springboro offensive line has had pretty much the whole first quarter just to relax and just, you know, energize over there. Make sure you're hydrated, no going down for crimps. You're gonna see Arm Brewster in here for the first play of their second drive. And Arm Brewster's gonna get the pitch to the left or to the right, and Arm Brewster's out. He's at the 30, 40, hey, hey, 50. Hey, Actually, it's Case, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And Titan Case is going to have an 89 yard touchdown run. run. So Titan Case, two plays, over 100 yards offensively, and two huge touchdowns. Wow. This, this Springboro offense, you got to be a happy coach over there on that sideline as two plays this whole entire quarter has resulted in two touchdowns as you're up 13 to nothing right now. And DePore coming on to attempt his second extra point of the quarter to put him up a potential 14 to nothing. But that speed by Titan Case, he didn't even have to make a defender miss. He just blew by him. Kicks good, or up and good, as DePore puts the Panthers up seven, or 14 to nothing. Another quick touchdown for the Panthers. And then that offense, that Beaver Creek offense, they had little time to get any Rest. break. <laughs> they might have got a drink of water, but Springboro's gonna put them right back on the field offensively. And defensively for the Beavers, I mean, you pinned them deep that time in their territory. And it was still one play and about 30 seconds off the clock, clock total. It was just some great blocking by that Springboro line. I really opened up a hole. And that touchdown and Case just took it all the way home for another touchdown. So now DePore is going to come out and kick off for the Panthers for the third time this quarter. He's going to put it in the end zone for the third time this quarter. Oh, for our Springboro fans watching, they know that all their kickers on kickoffs put the ball in the, put the, ball in the end zone. They don't let it have a chance to return. Thank you to the boys out there. Matthew DeFore 
sets up to kick off. Poor Reddy's looks over the line. And the Boar puts this one at the back of the end zone. And Spring or Beaver Creek will start their third drive this quarter at their own 20. And the Beaver Creek offense will take over first and 10. So on that last drive, it looked like the blocking got better for the offensive line for the quarterback. A little bit better protection, but now Springboro just has to capitalize and make a few plays downfield and try to get on the scoreboard. Like you said, you don't want to get too far behind before halftime comes around. And this Springboro offense right now just looks like nobody can stop them. On the side, on the sidelines, it looks like Cole Pepper's preparing himself to get back into this game. Is that run by Anton? And he maybe gets to the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're going to mark him for a loss of one. A yard short of the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 11 now from the 19. Second and 11 from the 19. Now, other than that fake handoff, it seems like this running game for this Beaver Creek offense is just. It's been stagnant up the middle. Nothing really moving or working up the middle. I want to see them pitch it out to Etten, and I want to see him hit somebody in open field and knock them on the ground. Almost a delay game. Barrett's going to be brought down in the backfield by number two, Tanner Banks. That's going to be a huge sack back down to the nine. This Spring Row defensive line, they are just they're destroying through this Beaver, well, Beaver Creek O-line. The yeah, they're making huge there. holes for the linebackers to come right through, as you saw there. And it's third and 21 now. Now, if you're a Beaver Creek carry, you just need to at least get something so your punter can at least not be punting from his own end zone. Right. Barnett's gonna go back. Gonna throw a screen and it's almost intercepted. You see number 21 there, Mason Leach, blow through and almost intercepted that one-handed. Now the officials are going to take a timeout as it looks like number 74 is on the ground for the Panther for the Beavers. That's Josh Hughes. Hughes is up. Gonna have a little bit of a limp. Gonna be assisted to the sideline. It's going to bring out the punting crew, and and this, these last couple snaps for these punts have been high, they've been low. So if a punt here is a mishap, it could result at, at minimum a safety. Hawker has a good kick, trailing towards the sideline, backs up the Panthers, and he's going to be make some moves. He's still on his feet and finally brought down at the 34. That was number 10, Connor Heiser. Now let's see if it just takes one more play for this Springboro offense as they're in great field position. This is the second best starting field position they've had. 
on the receiving team, number four. This penalty is going to push that Springboro offensive drive back a couple of yards here, but still in great field positioning. I think they called him for a block in the back. Now let's see if they go to number three, Titan Case. So he's done all the damage. Two plays and two touchdowns on offense for Case and the Panthers. I mean, so I don't I see why, why not. not. All right, <laughs> exactly. He's uh, he's been killing this defense on two plays. So I mean, if it's not broke, don't. You see, Case is going to be at the top of your screen in the slot receiver position, and they're going to hand it to Arm Brewster right up the middle. And Arm Brewster breaks through two tackles, and Arm Brewster's going to have himself a long Arm touchdown Bruce run too for the Panthers. Finds some running room. It's a touchdown for the Panthers. Well, it wasn't Case, but Arm Brewster found a hole and he took it all the way for another Springboro touchdown as that is only three drives this whole entire quarter that has resulted in three touchdowns to give these Springboro Panthers a 20 to zero lead over the Beaver Creek Beavers. Moise Arm Brewster, 46 yard run. Can you even call three plays a drive? It's three plays on three drives. <laughs> I've, I've never seen anything like this. It's, it's honestly kind of mind blowing that your offense has just gone out there and just killed it so much to just only have three drives that results in three touchdowns. And each touchdown drive has been over 35 yards or more. Or touchdown play, I should say. I'm not going to call it a drive. DePore's extra point is up and good and actually goes out of the back of the stadium back there. <laughs> Two and a half minutes left in the first quarter here. And Springboro, if Beaver Creek doesn't find an answer here to try to get some points on the board, Beaver Creek's first of all in jeopardy of going down to that blowout clock, clock rule if you're up 30 or more points the where the clock won't stop. But it, it's a momentum killer too that your offense is driving down the field and the defense isn't getting any time to rest. Yes, it's that uh, that Beaver Creek offense just has to be exhausted as they have zero to little rest down in there on the sidelines. Now, do you believe that it's just the Springboro offense that is just make this offensive line that's creating these holes, making these plays, or do you just believe it's these this Beaver Creek defense that's just they're not doing enough? I I think it's more. The, beef, or the Springboro offensive line is making these holes. This senior class, four out of the five linemen are seniors that have played together for three, the past three years, and the running backs with them are seniors, so they, they kind of have a feel for each other what's going to happen before the ball's even snapped. And as you can see on both of these drives, these blocks that these Panthers have been putting on these Beavers, they've just been sending them right to the ground and opening up these humongous holes for these running backs to go through. And DePore kicks it right into the end zone. Another kick into the end zone for DePore. And Beaver Creek offense will come onto the field. They'll be facing a first and 10. First and 10 now at the 20 again for the Beavers. And like you said, this offense, they just need something, some slight of momentum to at least just give them some hope in this game is already down 21 to nothing before the first quarter is even over. Terrell's gonna go in motion and Terrell's gonna get the carry out of the backfield and he's gonna get about a gain of four on the play, maybe five out to the 25. And besides the one big run that Culpepper had, that's the biggest offensive play for the... And Culpepper is still on the sidelines as he went down, but it looks like he's ready to go back in. It's just a matter of time. A high oh. snap bobbled and Barnett falls down and at about the... 15, so about a loss of 10. It's going to be third and 15. And what a wise decision by Barrett just to go lay down on the ball as most people, they try to pick up and run with it. 
and picking it up and running with it could have caused a worse fumble or a turnover. Now let's just see if this uh, offense can at least just get them closer so they can pin that Springboro down in their own field territory. Barnett back to pass, looks one way, gonna throw it right in the middle of the field and it's right at Terrell's feet. Now what do you think this Beaver Creek offense just they need to do to at least spark some energy into this team? The offensive line needs to go over, I think they need to go back and look at the playbook to see which way they're supposed to be blocking because they're letting these, the Panthers defensive line is tearing them up. Yeah, like they just, they can't get any movement on these run gains. Any, when they go back to pass, they're literally there and it seems like a blink of an eye. Yeah, it seems like it's causing the Beaver Creek's QB to rush his throws. Right, we haven't seen Barnett be able to throw with a planted foot. He's always been on the run because he's being chased down by at least three or four, sometimes five Panthers in the backfield. As Hawker's on to kick or punt for the fourth time this quarter. Snaps good, a flag on the play, and the punch trailing towards the sideline and fair caught by Leach at the 40. But let's see what the flag Illegal is. Illegal shift on the kicking team. declined. An illegal shift against Beaver Creek on the snap and Springboro will decline it and they'll start their fourth drive of the quarter at the 40. Now let's see if this drive so, takes more than one play. I was about to say, if you're a betting man, do you think this is gonna go one play to either Arm Brewster or Case? Well, you know, I believe, you know, they've, they've just been driving right down this field. So, I mean, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna say it's gonna be one drive here. Keep the tradition going. See if this Beaver Creek defense though can put up a stand and make it at least two drives. Actually going to be a quarterback change. Number 14, Sam Feldman's going to come into the game for the Panthers as Apple will stay on the sideline. Now, did Apple only have one pass attempt and one pass completion? Yes. So let's see if Feldman is going to do anything different. Case is going to come in motion top to bottom of your screen. Feldman's going to go to the sideline and it is hauled in. Well, no touchdown on that play, but to Heiser at the far sideline, tackled by Johnston, a first down catch. So I guess now you can say that this is a drive. Second play, Beaver Creek's offense gets a little bit of a rest as Armbruster gets the carry here, dances to the outside and is tackled at about the 20. Armbruster running a slant. Six, maybe. Tackle made by number 26, Evan Gaudet. Tackled by Gaudet. about three on the play. It'll set up a second down at seven. See this Beaver Creek defense this, this time around is they're stepping up and not letting these blockers pummel them into the Have ground. Have their way with them second so far. <laughs> Almost a false start, and they the, far, the close umpire will call it. It's going to be an offside or encroachment against. Encroachment, defense number 58. Repeat. Flag. Second down. Flag's going to go against Solomon Hardeman. It'll be a gain second of five on the penalty, so it'll be second and three for Springboro. Not in the red zone yet. Beaver Creek hasn't been, or Springboro hasn't been in the red zone yet. As that pass is hauled in by Khalil Trent. Feldman's pass is complete to Trent. And now that sets them up in the red zone. Those two have a right close to the 10 yard line. It'll be good read for each other on the basketball the court. When we get into basketball season, you'll see that. And Those two make a lot of passes back and forth. The Ullery Real Estate Red Zone. And Feldman, and this will be the third play of the drive. And 
And like you said, this is the longest possession that Springboro has had. And that one will be the end of the first quarter as Springboro is leading 21 to nothing in our MVCC game of the week for week number two here at Carefly Field. And that'll bring the first quarter of play to an end here at Carefly Field at Watkins Stadium. We head to the second quarter, Panthers so, 21, Beaver Creek zero. We can go inside the Beaver Creek huddle right now. What, what do you think they have to do to try to force Springboro and hold them to at least a field goal try? Well, I just believe that they need to, they need to stop this passing game as right now, uh, Feldman, He's just tearing them up right now, finding his receivers and connecting. And even on the run, they're, uh, they're just finding these holes and getting at least over four yards each game. So I think they're just, they just really need to step up and make a stop here. And hopefully just give this team at least some momentum knowing that they can't stop the Springboro offense. And if you're Springboro, what do you, this is the longest that the offensive, has, offensive unit has been on the field. Well, if I'm Springboro, like, I wouldn't change a thing as you're marching down the field each and every drive. And even though this is the longest time of possession for them, they're still making it seem like it's, it's really easy, easy out there. Yeah. As they're passing the ball very well, running the ball, finding those gaps, and they're just, everything's connecting for them right now. You're gonna see Feldman's gonna be back out there again. Snap was on the ground, he's gonna throw it to the end zone to Trent. Trent goes up, and he hauls it in, it's actually Heiser. But what a touchdown catch there by Heiser That's over the defender. Set it up by a horrible play. snap as it was into the ground, but Feldman handled it greatly. He grabbed it and he instantly knew where he was going with that ball and connected for another touchdown. Well, Illegal. let's... Ineligible number 54 on the offense. Oh, it looks like that gonna... touchdown's gonna be brought back. Saw the flag on the field late. So it's actually going to back well, the, the Panthers the up. For a moment. Well, touchdown or not, that was, a, a, that was a, a great heck of a catch. catch. For the Panthers now, from their now that they just make the touchdown a longer stat pattern for the, for the books. So instead of a four-yard touchdown catch, it's going to be a 15, 16-yard touchdown catch on this play. Arm Brewster left to Feldman. Feldman drops back, gonna go right to the same play, hauled in by Trent, and he reaches Feldman across the pile for the for the touchdown. It's a Panther touchdown. It's a different receiver this time, but still another Panther touchdown. As now, it's 27 to zero, with 11.44 left in the second quarter. And like we said, this Panther offense is just making it look easy out there as they're, I don't know if there's really anything this Beaver Creek defense can do at this point to stop them as they just, Kind of makes you wonder if it was just week one jitters against the Thunderbolts last week. Because, I mean, what we've seen so far by Springboro's offense, it's, it's play after play after play. And it's almost 10, 15 yards down the field for each play offensively. Well, I bet Northmont's defense probably put much more, put more of a stop too. DePore's kick is up and good. DePore's kick is good with 11.44 to go, second quarter. 11.44 left in the first half. Springboro up 28 to nothing. Still trying to figure out what the quarterback change was for for Springboro, but. I believe that, I mean, their offense has just been clicking so well. Might just be one to get felt. Time to give some Feldman. backup, some riffs on right. varsity. Let him get some touches and give Apple a rest. As it was a nail-biter game for the Panthers and Thunderbolts last week as Northmont won. You said Apple needs a rest? He was on the play for three, he was on the field for three plays and they got three touchdowns. I'm talking about from past week's game. Oh. I was about to say, if you, if you burned your energy on three plays <laughs> and maybe playing quarterback and G-Walk's not your thing, but I mean, I, I wanted to see Apple out on the field tonight more than what we have. I would agree, but the way this game's going right now, it seems like they're going to keep Feldman in, unless Beaver Creek can score here. Hopefully they can spark some momentum and give this team some much needed momentum. So we've seen DeBoer put it in the end zone five times going from 
right to left on the screen. You think he's going to put it here? Uh, most definitely. DePore drives it, and it is in the back of the end zone. Called it. And that just looks like it's a chip shot for him. Yeah, well, it just mixed so easily that it just glides right into the end zone every time. Like, he puts no effort into it. And again, this Beaver Creek offense is going to start. I want to see Beaver Creek get a stop because I want to see how he punts. You, we read the stats last week, eight punts, six pinned inside the 20 and two touchbacks, 346 yards through the air. I, I want to see that. Beaver Creek first and 10 at the 20 again. As it looks like that is number one. Devin Garnes. With and about a one yard Garnes carry there. Now we haven't seen since the very beginning of this game of that fake handoff, no the which gave them the largest, largest play of the game for them. I find Beaver Creek might want to try going back after it as it, as it worked for him. Another handoff to Garnes. Garnes changes direction, and he's probably actually going to Garns lose a yard. Again, the ball carrier. He's unable to escape the grass. So number 21, Mason Leach. And like Leach. we've been talking Leach about, down after this uh, Beaver Creek running one and a half yard has game. just been stagnant as they can't get much, any yardage at all. Third down and nine from the 21. With it being third down and nine, I expect to see a pass here by Barnett. And like we've been talking about, this Beaver Creek O-line they just need to give him more time in the pocket to set his feet and plant. Barnett back to pass, a flag on the play, and it's gonna be inter or incomplete, almost intercepted, and there's two more flags gonna come in. And most likely going to be a pass interference call on number 35, Nathan Flynn from Springboro. As that was the most time that Barnett's had in the pocket Illegal this whole entire game. Shift on the offense, pass interference on the defense. Those plays offset, repeat, third down. Heard the call, we'll redo it from the 21 yard line. Well, both flags offset each other as Beaver Creek's going to have another third and nine. Beaver Creek with a man in motion. Barnett's going to roll to the right, throw it downfield, and it is through the hands of what would have been a first down and a wide open receiver. Barnett rolls down. That was number 14, Pierce Doyle. For number 14, Pierce that was the intended Doyle. target. Knocked away by number 16, Jay Davis. Knocked away by so Davis of the, the Panthers. Offense. And this Beaver Creek uh, punting unit is coming out for the fifth time this game. And it seems like these punts have been setting up Springboro in great field. Hawker on to punt again for the Beavers. And a delay of game is going to be called against the Beavers. Delay of game, kicking team. Repeat, fourth down. Now so it seems on all these punts that a flag on these on these Beavers has just been pushing them back. And it's setting these punts up within literally the 10 yard line. The and it's causing line. the Springboro Panthers to have great starting field advantage. This punt's going to be fielded, fair caught at the Heiser 47 fair catch. by Heiser. At the 49 yard line, right near the 50. It'll be first and 10 Panthers. 
Now let's see if this Beaver Creek defense can put up a stop. His last drive of the Springboro offense, it was more than just one play. The longest they'd been on the field, but they still work, went down the field with precision in probably about six plays. Apple back at the control. You're gonna see the Apple numbers. back into the game. Joined in the backfield. Maybe they just wanted to get Feldman some touches and Nathan he Blake. delivered. Apple back to pass. Apple's gonna be wrapped up. No, he escapes it. And he's gonna throw it downfield, hauled in by Apple's pass is complete. Number 10. The number to 10 Connor Hazer. As he was the one who made that excellent catch line. in the back of the end zone, but was called back because of a flag. I thought Apple was wrapped up for about a six-yard sack, and I don't know how he got out of that. Uh, he did showing some uh, elusiveness out there. And both quarterbacks of this Springboro offense has been looking great, even though we haven't got to see much of Apple. It's a pitch off. out to number 35, oh, Flynn. Flynn. He's inside the 20. Brought down by number 44, Anthony Johnston. Tackle by Johnston for the Beavers, and that's two plays, and Springboro's already inside the 20. It's going to set up second and four. Let's see if they'll go back to the run or if Apple's going to go back to pass. Apple back to pass, going to throw it in the end zone, Apple's and it is in the end zone. hauled in. Complete. Touchdown, Panthers. Touch I believe that is Trent. It's a second touchdown of the game, I believe. The second touchdown in as many possessions for the Panthers. And that play goes through. Makes it 34 to nothing now. Is this Panthers offense, I, I'm just at a loss of words as they're just, they're making it seem super easy out here. And they're surprising us with each possession. They're changing it up. The quarterback hasn't been the same for every drive. <laughs> Snap is on the ground, but the hold is up and kick is good for DePore, and he puts, them, puts the Panthers up 35 to nothing. Still with just a few seconds over nine minutes left in the first half. If you're Beaver Creek, you've got to try and muster a drive just to take some time off the clock, get to halftime and rework something. If you're Beaver Creek right now, you, you have to come up with something to give your team some sort of energy because the team down 35 to nothing, it just, it's demoralizing and it's just, you just need something to give your team some hope. Because you never know, this game could change. on to kick off once again for the Panthers. And it's gonna be another chip shot into the end zone. And Beaver Creek is gonna start at the 20 once again. And I just think they need to move that ball up because every time they are set to punt, it's ball setting. Up. They need to move it back to the 10 and see if he can get it to the end zone. <laughs> he probably will, too. 9.19 left in the first half. Beaver Creek trying to find something. You have to muster something, get some points on the board. Because when we start this second half, that 30 point running clock will come into effect and as you see the inside run here by Edson goes nowhere. Nick Etchen, the ball carrier, is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Now if you're Beaver Creek and you're in your running game, do you think this pitch out and get some blockers in front of you might work out instead of just running you right up the middle each time? You would think that pitch out worked good for the one time that they ran it. But they haven't went back to it. 
It's kind of mind blowing. Barnett's pass is high and incomplete. And that could have ended in. Outside that could have ended badly. Grasp, and if you're if you're a Beaver Creek fan, you saw the success with those two plays at the beginning of the game, and you've got to be frustrated why they're not going back to it. Exactly. It's the only thing that's went right for Beaver Creek in this dismal first half of play. Barnett's going to roll to the right, and he's going to be hit hard, but an, almost another one-handed one -handed interception there. It's just, it's it's crazy how fast this Spring Row defensive line is getting to him as number two, Tanner Banks, was literally there giving pressure instantly once that ball is snapped. It's going to be fourth and 10, and Hawker's going to be out to punt tonight again. Seems like that's the only repetitive name that we've called is the punter as Beaver Creek cannot sustain a drive longer than three and out. Hawker with a kick towards the sidelines and Trent's going to let it roll out at about the 35. I believe this is going to be the farthest that Springboro's offense is going to be starting off at, as it looks like it's going to be around the line. At 35. So we're going to call it now, and it's going to be three plays and a touchdown for the Panthers? You know, I, I have hope in this Beaver Creek defense. I believe that they're, I think they're going to make a stop here. Because they need something. As Feldman's going to come back out onto the field for the Panthers, a quarterback. I mean, you're up 35 to nothing. Why not get? Why not let your backup get some touches? Arm Brewster's going to join him back in the backfield again as he set out that last drive. Arm Brewster, no. Feldman's going to keep it. Throws it to Heiser. Heiser has a blocker out in front. Heiser's at the 50 and can't break out of that Feldman's tackle. He spun Heiser out of bounds complete. at the 45. Heiser's brought out of bounds after a nice gain. 16, Logan Spieth. Spieth pushes him out of bounds. Heiser got across the 50-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Panthers from the Beaver Creek 46. From the 46. I kind of want to see Feldman go back to Trent a little bit more room to work with here. So they're going to put Arm Brewster and Case in the backfield. Case is going to get the carry, and he breaks one tackle at the 50, gets across the 40, and he will have enough for a first down. It looked like he was going to be taken down in that backfield, but he broke off and cut back to give Springboro another first down. He knocked out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. There's some miscommunication Joe's between the chain gang. For they say it's a first down, but the marker's at third down at the wrong side, spot of the field. Officials spot the ball at the 36. So it is enough for a first down, down now. Panthers. Waiting for the chains to move or see if they're going to measure it. Case goes in motion. Arm Brewster gets the handoff, and Arm Brewster bursts through. He's Arm at the Brewster, 20, the 10, hurdles into the end zone at the 5, and Arm touchdown Brewster with his second Panther. touchdown of the game. That's speed by Arm Brewster as he broke through those holes. It seemed like he got to that touchdown very quickly. Eight Matthew seconds Cruz, took him to get from the 36 to the end zone. Now it is 41 to nothing in favor of Springboro. DePour on to attempt his eighth. Wow. 
And you brought up, he's only missed one extra point. In I all think of his, his whole career in the last two years. Hopefully we don't jinx him here. And nope, it is good. I think the score 42 to nothing. A 7.47 left in the second quarter. Second quarter, Springboro with a 42 point advantage. I mean, as we look here at Beaver Creek's huddle, the coach is looking a little bit heated. His, but he can't be too mad. The defense is out there too much. I mean, at some point, the offense has got to sustain a drive just so the defense can get some rest. Now I have a question here. Now, if, if you're Beaver Creek and say the ball's not kicked all the way into the end zone, would you might try to return it out and get farther down than starting out at your own 20? Just so I mean, that would mean the poor would not have to get it to the end zone. True. Then I, I don't think the poor has ever kicked it short. But I would try something. I mean, who knows how many kickoffs that Springboro has actually had to work on with the poor putting it in the end zone each time tonight so far. But if it's close, I say give it a shot. Try to return it. Nope. So that one's about eight yards into the back of the end zone. That kick goes into the end zone. For a touchback, it'll be I know it Beaver sounds like we're on a loop, but here Beaver we go. Creek First and ten at the 20. Line. 7.47 left in the first half. Beaver Creek down 42 to nothing. You'll see Barnett in the backfield with Aiton behind him. Barnett fumbles it, and he's just going to fall on it at the 15. Barnett fumbles the snap. He's smothered by the Springboro defense. It's a loss of five on the play. It just It'll seems like nothing is going 15. Beaver Creek's way tonight. They won the coin toss. So if you want to count that as something in the positivity. But Beaver Creek is just being outmanned and outplayed so far. This is a strong Springboro team that returned quite a few players from last season as Barnett's pass is hauled in at the 30 or the 25. It's like by their tight end, number 85, Gabe Phillips. But I mean, Springboro dominated G Walk last year, went, I think, 9 and 1 in the regular season, and then went and lost in the first round at Dublin, I think, Jerome in seven overtimes in the first round. Now, there's so many Dublin teams down there, in, or up there in Columbus. I believe it, it was either Jerome or Kaufman. Barnett's pass is going to be hauled in for a first down at the 30. And this Beaver Creek offense, is they've moved the chains. It's going to be first and 10 at the 30. Beaver Creek with their first first down on offense since the first quarter. Barnett back to pass, throws a bullet to the outside, and it is intercepted by number 35. That is Flynn. Barnett's pass is intercepted. Did by Flynn have the other interception in the, in the beginning Leach of this game? had the first interception, Leach, I yeah. believe. And just like there was a miscommunication there between Barnett and uh, Phillips there as Phillips wasn't even looking I think for the ball. Phillips was running up to Seymour waiting we'll to be Springboro out in front of him. And, but that offensive On line not protecting Barnett, and it, he had to get rid of it in a hurry. That's Barnett's second interception of this game. We're going to see Apple back out on the field. It seems like Springboro is just switching it up each and every drive. It's kind of like that year Ohio State had 
Well, is it Cardell and, and Haskins and, uh, or not Haskins, Barrett and Cardell Jones? That huge play went inside the red zone and actually going to go inside the 10. This Springboro passing game is just, have they had an incomplete pass? I don't think so. The only one that's been brought back is Apple throws it in the end zone. And that's the first incomplete pass. So there you go. We jinxed him there. But yeah, the only pass that would be considered incomplete before that one was the one that was brought back on the illegal shift. True. Now, it just seems that this offense from Spring Bros, they, they huddle up quickly and they snap it and instantly just throw before that Beaver Creek defense can even turn their head around to find the ball. Apple hands off to Armbruster. Armbruster to the left at the five and in. Armbruster's third touchdown of the game, second of this quarter. An eight yard run. An eight yard run there for the senior. As it's going to put them up 48 to nothing. DePore is going to come out. Make it 49. Now, do you believe there's going to be a point in this game where Spring Bros is just going to stop controlling the ball and scoring these touchdowns? I don't know. I think if you're Spring Bros, you want to make a statement. And putting up 50 in the first half is a huge statement. But you got to show the rest of the G Walk that your first week loss was just a fluke. First week jitters against a decent Northmont team. The extra point kick. But it's good. You've got to Five show the other teams to too in the rest of Ohio. Quarter. I mean, it's six weeks for the regular season and then we're going into the playoffs. And you might not be able to put 49 in a full game against some of the teams in the Columbus and Cincinnati region. So you want to get as much work as you can as you're going to be fighting them in the second, third and fourth round. But I mean, it, it, the playoffs is going to be interesting this year. I mean, anybody can qualify if they want to. So I mean, would you start seeing teams like if you're five and zero oh, or four and one or three and two going into the last week? Are you going to rest your starters for that first week if you're going to go to the playoffs? Well, I believe it'd be the smart idea. Is like, like you said, anyone can qualify, no matter what your record is. But you still want to try to go out there and get that win because you never know who you could be matched Seated up against. against. Yeah. And sometimes points for and points Peter against Bruce. comes against that. And that's why Springboro has still left a lot of their majority of starters in. Because what happens if you are up for the number two seed and you pulled your starters in a game that you could have easily put up another touchdown or two. And another Before touchback. Touch As, like you said, to pour another Peter touchback. So we're going to start at the line. 20 again. But I mean, You'll, if you're a head coach, you'll kick yourself for pulling your team out and you miss the number two or number three seed by seven points or six points that you know you could have had in True. a blowout game and you pulled your starters for not risking injury. Now that last, that last offensive drive for the Beaver Creek offense, they got, they got some uh, energy going, so hopefully they can mount that back and get something rolling for them. As they do. Here's a huge run for the Beavers. It's a first down run out to the 41. Number five. I believe that's Terrell. Nice game by number 20, Nathan Coy. First down for Beaver Creek. Brought down by number 20, Nathan Coy for the Beavers, but that is Beaver Creek's biggest offensive play of the game. Let's see if they can keep going with that and maybe get a touchdown here. ATN's going to get the carry. He's going to hurdle over a defender, and he's upended at about the 46. So that's a gain of five there. So Beaver Creek making a few plays here in a big chunk at a time. Leach with the tackle there for the Beavers. Barnett in the backfield. And he's going to hand it off to 
Terrell again, again, and he's tackled right at midfield, so that'll be about a gain of three more. And it's going to be third and two as Beaver Creek trying to get back into Springboro territory here. Flynn with the tackle there for the... Something's just different about this Beaver Creek offense is they're just, they're making big gains. And their offensive line is creating these holes for the running backs to get through. As Etienne Aiton's going to get the carry, he's going to have a first Rick down Aiton's run the for the carrier. Beavers. And this is the best we've seen this Beaver Creek offense all night. 21 Leach. Leach with the tackle again there for the Panthers. Inside Springboro territory at the 48. Surprised we haven't called Etheridge's name a lot tonight, but I haven't seen him on the field as much either as we're into this second quarter. Maybe Coach pulled him. Don't want to risk injuring potentially one of the best linebackers in the G walk. Barnett's going to hand it off to Eaton. And he's chugging away. He dives through to the 45, and that'll be a big gain there, about a gain of six on the play. Now, if Beaver Creek would have came out with this offense at the start of the game, this game might be, look a little, might be looking a little different. And seven from the 45. Springboro's also switched from rushing five to rushing three. So that might be why they're getting to the second level for Beaver Creek. And another ball on the ground. Barnett's going to throw it, and it is incomplete. Barnett's pass broken up by number six. That's the second time, or actually third time of this game, where that snap has been muffed by Barnett, and he's had to go down with it, or this time I'm he surprised picked, he picked, he picked it up. Yeah, that's very gutsy, as that could have turned around and canceled this whole entire drive for this offense. It's gonna be third and seven. Now, if you're BB Creek and don't get and don't convert on this third down, would you just go for it fourth? I'd say you have to. This is the best drive you've had since the first quarter as a little flare over the middle call caught the by the number 85 Gabe tight Phillips end Phillips for a first down. 35. And that time Flint. Barnett and Phillips is on the same page. Get the first down for Beaver Creek. Well, like you said, last time and Phillips wasn't pit. It didn't seem like he was, had any idea that the ball was thrown to him and it was picked off. Beaver Creek's taking Phillips and uh, and Garns off the field. This is probably going to be an ETN or eight and run up the middle. Actually, it's going to be Terrell. Terrell has a first, close to another first down. Terrell has had some great drives, or great runs during this drive. Gain of nine for Beaver Creek, second down and one. Second and one, gain of nine on that play. Terrell's going to get the carry again. And he will have the Terrell first down. The side, gaining a Beaver Creek first down. down near there Beaver is. Creek slowly moving the ball down the court, or down the field. I'm getting ready for basketball. <laughs> and it's only week two of football. There is about a minute and 30 left in this first or second quarter before halftime. So if Beaver Creek wants to score, they might have to hurry up. Barnett going to throw to the end zone. And it is hauled in, I believe, by number 14, Pierce Doyle. Doyle with a beautiful pass there from Barnett. Well, Beaver Creek does show some sign of life and gets on the scoreboard, making the score 49 to 6. I say if you're Beaver Creek, you go for two to try to get as many points back as you can. Try to not get that. 30-point um, rule -yard starting and running for much in the second quarter or second half. And Beaver is going to go for two, and Hawker's going to run right in for the extra point. So it's going to bring the score 49 to eight. It seemed like Springboro's defense had like no idea what was going on there, even though it was clearly shown that it was going to be a I didn't know what they were doing. I, 
And was I was surprised that the quarter, Hawker ran it in three, three, with no blocking. Yeah, it just seemed like that Springboro defense was just standing there. But now the score is 49-8. A minute 14 left. I think Springboro has all three timeouts, or Beaverkirk has all three timeouts. Might we see an onside kick? Just try and get the ball back, steal a possession, keep momentum on your side. Now, if you're Springboro here and you do get the ball, are you going to try and score again before halftime, or are you just going to kneel it and go into halftime with a humongous lead? For doing this for six years, I've, I've never seen Ryan Wilhite just sit on the ball to end the half. With a minute 14 and three timeouts, I can see, I can feel that they're probably going to try and get that touchdown back. Arm Brewster and Case will be back deep for the Panthers. Arm Brewster and Case are going to be back, but they're only going to stand at about the 17-yard line, maybe anticipating a short kick here for the Beavers. Might try to do a squib. This is the first time Beaver Creek's kicked off in this game because they had the ball first. And it's going to be a squib right up the middle. It's going to be fielded at about the 27 by Case. Or actually, that's not Case. That is Etheridge. Etheridge making moves. And Etheridge has nobody in front of him. And Etheridge is going to have about Michael a 70-yard kickoff line. return on a squib. Now that looked like that play was going to be blown apart as he ran into his own player, actually. But he turned around and found some openings and scored. I think running into his teammate actually helped kept him up because it looked like he was maybe slipping. Well, in a matter of seconds, the Spring Road Panthers get that touchdown right back. And that just has to hurt for Beaver Creek, guys. You go down you just there and get that yourself touchdown. a little momentum to go into halftime on with something to work off of, and a squib kick gets returned for a touchdown. To pour on to kick another extra point for the Panthers. It's up, and it's good. Extra point kick is good with 58 seconds to go. Second quarter. On 58 seconds left here in the first half Man, of our MVCC of game of the week for week number two. Is do you think Beaver Creek has enough time with three timeouts to try and get down the field to get something? Well, unless they. Uh, Unless they can get a good run here, and I might, they might be able to get a field goal here, but with the way their offense has been looking, I don't think they just have enough to get down there quickly and score. You said with a return, like the poor's not gonna put this one into back the end zone again. Carroll back deep for Beaver Creek. Well, you maybe if you're a Beaver Creek, maybe extend in the end zone and you might be able to catch the ball and bring it out to maybe farther than the 20 yard line. As that ball is crushed and kicked to the back of the end zone. I wonder if he can make it through the uprights on the kickoff. The the That's a, I think at halftime I'm gonna run down there and tell him to try to do that. Now, can you explain a little bit of this 30-point rule that you were talking about? OHSA implemented three years ago that if a team is down by 30 or more in the second half, the clock will not stop unless a timeout or an injury timeout. So if the ball is incomplete or change of possession or anything, the clock will continue to run. It cuts down on injuries that could be sustained. Timeout, Springbow, that's their first of the half. Springboro takes a timeout here. But yeah, it's it's just the safety feature that the 
OHSA has implemented to try to cut down and it, that can be demoralizing it could ruin the next game I mean you just come out and get your rear ends handed to you and then you're going to finish the full game under full power by the Ohio Department of Health the governor's office and the Ohio High School Athletic Association but Beaver Creek did show some shines of life on that last drive so we'll see if they can do it again 58 seconds left and three timeouts for the Beavers. I believe it. the Beaver Creek Beavers just keep handing off to Terrell as he had some great runs. They might be able to get down there for maybe a field goal. As Terrell's carry Goes right up the middle, and the ball Guards might have come the out there carrier. late. There's a fumble on the play. Let's see what the refs say. And it's going to say it stays with Beaver Creek. And apparently Beaver Creek recovered it. Maybe a gain of a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. But with, I bet the time, he'll just let the time expire. I think they will too. 22 seconds left on the clock and 20 seconds left on the play clock. Maybe one more play. And it looks like they will get one more play off before the half. And I think the quarterback faked out his own receivers on that play. Full start, offer number 71. <laughs> Repeats, second down. False start. We'll back him up five yards. It'll be second down now from the 16. And that will be the end of our first half in our MVCC game of the week for week number two. Beaver Creek down 56 to eight the first half to the play. Panthers. The it means room. it's halftime, so we're going to throw it down eight. to the bands for their halftime performance, and we'll be back for your second half of the MVCC Game of the Week for week number two.
All right, welcome back to CareFlight Field here at Watkins Stadium, Springboro, Ohio, for getting ready for our second half of our MVCC game of the week for week number two. Springboro's up 56 to eight over the visiting Beaver Creek Beavers. Little bit of what we expected coming into the game. Springboro had a lot of returning players. Beaver Creek had a bunch of underclassmen last year on the team with a bunch of senior led on the team as well. Springboro is going to get ready to get the second half kickoff. So it'll be interesting to see who, which quarterback is going to take the field I here. I think they might keep Feldman out there to start off. And for Beaver Creek, Culpepper went out in that first half, and he hasn't returned since, and he's still being taken care of by the medical staff down here. All right, we're just about ready for second half action here at Care Flight Field at Watkins Stadium. It'll be Beaver Creek kicking off to Springboro. Arm Brewster and Case back deep for the Panthers. Me food is called. We'll have a running clock here in the second half. You heard the PA announcer say there will be a running clock as Case fields that ball at the 25. Cuts it back out to the field. He's pushed out of bounds at the 42. And Case with a big return. He's run out of bounds just across the 40 yard line. And as you heard the PA announcer say, there will be the running clock for the rest of this game unless Beaver Creek can get it under 30. Actually went out of bounds right at the 40 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Panthers. Apple. Enough, and they got Apple to come out there. Apple going to come back out. I bet Spring Row is going to keep that uh, switching in and out between Apple and Feldman. Case gonna go motion from bottom to top of your screen. Arm, no, Apple's gonna pull it out, spin move, and Apple is gonna be brought down in the backfield for the first time this night. For about a two yard loss. Number 58, Solomon Hardeman. This Beaver Creek defense is coming out here the second half. Showing that they're not gonna just get stomped all over. A loss of three on the play. You're gonna see a receiver stack both at both ends of the line. Apple back to pass, gonna air it out to number 10, Heiser, Apple and it's incomplete. incomplete. And I don't know if he would have got a foot in bounds if he would have held on to that. Heiser, the Heiser did have some steps over over that defender. If that ball would have been more in bounds, looked like that could have been another Springboro touchdown. Gonna be third and 12. This might be the Biggest battle that this offense has had to endure this whole entire game at third and 12. Let's see if they can convert here. Arm Brewster to the left. Apple's gonna roll to the left. He's gonna throw it downfield, hauled in by number 88, the tight end, and he's gonna be into Beaver Creek territory. Apple rolling to his left completes the pass. That was caught by Luke Zier. The penalty flag on the play, the pass was completed. There's a flag on the play. See what the referee calls for the flag. Personal foul, defense, number 32. First down. Don't know who quite that personal foul was on, but it'll be a 15 yards to the end of the run. I think he said 32, but cannot make out. Apple leading his offense from the 20. Apple hands off to Arm Brewster. Arm Brewster breaks it out to the 10 5 and in. Arm Brewster with his fourth touchdown of the game and his sixth in two weeks. Arm Brewster runs in for the score. Arm is just so quick and agile. Real estate red zone. Like he said, his fourth touchdown of the night. 
Do you know the the record for in Springboro for the most touchdowns in a game? I do not, but I think if he gets one more, that, that would be probably be close to putting it towards a record. I mean, not for a quarterback, because we've seen two quarterbacks throw for six in a game. DePore on to attempt another extra point. Snaps good, holds good, kick is up and good. The force kick is good. With nine minutes to go, third quarter. Springboro increases its advantage. 63 to eight now lead the Panthers and for some reason the clock has stopped. I don't know if Springboro's scorekeeper Red knows. Out there. They won the first game of a double header today against Pittsburgh. The clock should be going. I don't know if the scorekeeper doesn't realize that it's not. The referees don't seem to realize it's not. After tonight, they'll have 21 games left in the regular season. Still time to get into that playoff picture. All right, now we're most likely going to see another touchback here. That's going to set up the Beaver Creek offense at the, their own 20-yard line. Hopkins and Terrell back deep for Beaver Creek, but can't go deeper than out of, out of the back of the end zone to try to return one of DeBoer's kicks. And again, that ball is just punted. Hits the top of the P in Springboro in the end zone. So Beaver Creek will start out again at the 20. And let's see if they can, you know, mount some momentum off, off of that last drive that you saw right before halftime. See if they keep giving that ball to Terrell as he seemed to be moving the ball well. Barnett in the backfield. Barnett's gonna run it right up the middle. For about a gain of two, maybe three on the play. Perhaps actually Hicks comes in at quarterback for that play. Tackled by Nick Bevy for Springboro. It looks like he's gonna be passing the ball here. Gonna roll to the right. Gonna be tagged, chased down from behind and just overthrows the open receiver by Hicks. Intended to Garns. That was, that was not Barnett that threw that ball, was it? No, that was Hicks. I, I said to Barnett on the first run of the drive and we see, I see him now down here. He's on the sideline. It's Hicks out there. I wonder if Barnett's night might be done. Is Hicks their backup? Yes, he is. Maybe just to give Hicks some more touches. Hicks is going to tuck it and run, and he is, breaks two tackles, and he is going to be knocked out of bounds. It looked like by number 16 of Springboro, that is Jay Davis. So it's going to be fourth. Fourth and four. Fourth and four, and it looks like Hawker is going to come out, and he's going to punt again for the Beavers tonight. Good snap, high punt, fair caught at the 46 by Heiser. And the Panther offense will take over. And Springboro will take over first and 10 at the 44. And let's see if they bring out Fellman here instead of Apple. Uh, 
And it looks like I saw Apple in that team huddle for Springboro. And no, Feldman comes on the field. Feldman comes back. But it's just going to alternate. It looks like each other, every other drive is going to be the other quarterback. And like you said, it does remind me of those days at Ohio State where Coach Meyer went between JT Barrett and Cardell Jones. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Armbruster's going to get the carry. No, Feldman's going to keep it. Feldman at the 50, 40, 30, 20. Cuts it back in at the 10, at the 5, and he will circle his way into the end zone. Feldman, a 64-yard touchdown run. And we're back onto the one play, one drive, one touchdown for the Panthers. This offense for Springboro right now, is, it's just... I just don't know if there's any way of stopping it. Feldman run took him through the Ullery River. As every every Red time Town. this Springboro offense has gotten a ball, it's resulted in a touchdown. We have not seen them punt the ball. Seems like we've only seen them get to third down maybe two times this whole entire game. And one was the third and twelve that went to a long touchdown pass to Trent as DePore's kick is up DePore's and good. Good. And that puts the Panthers up 70 to 8 over the visiting Beaver Creek Beavers. I mean, it's not like Spring Bros coming out and making flashy or arrogant plays, if you want to call it. They're not showing poor sportsmanship. It's just. They're just they're, they're just pl running plays and they're finding the holes. It's like their offense is just unstoppable. Yeah, it's their their passing games on point, their running games on point, and everything that they've been doing tonight is just has been unstoppable. So this we're going to go ahead and say that Springboro's won this game, so that'll give Ryan Woolhite his 99th win in Springboro. We will have Springboro versus Miamisburg next week. We might get to see Will Height win his 100th game next week at Miamisburg in our game of the week for week number three. Hopkins and Terrell back deep Wouldn't that be something to you get your 100th win against one of your bigger rivals is these two when G-Walk used to be divided into four divisions and they were G-Walk South rivals for the longest time. And those two have put on some great games between the two of them. We've had offensive onslaughts. It was one year we had a 56 to 53 game. We've had games come down to the final second. The last game at Harmon Field, Miamisburg's old field. Um, Miamisburg got an interception with a minute and a half left and ended up scoring the game winning touchdown with five seconds left. Well, it sounds like next week's game is going to be There's one to a lot watch. Of, a lot of history behind the game to make it a good game. And with Miamisburg beating Beaver Creek last week 37 to nothing, as that pass is caught and he's hit hard, that is Terrell taking down. held on to the ball. Looks like it was taken down by number 20, Nathan Coy. But... I mean, just looking at the history behind those two, on paper, it's one of the better matchups that we, when we schedule, that it's going to be, no matter how the team's records are going into the game. There was one year, it was like Springboro was five and one, and Miamisburg was zero and four, and it ended up being one of the better games, closest games we had that season. And that pass is almost intercepted at the fifty, almost by number twenty. That is Nathan Coy. Nathan, he, Nathan Coy was the one who landed the hard hit last play as well. And he had an interception earlier in the game. And could you imagine if he would have come down with that? That would have been something you'd see on SportsCenter. I think that would have been on SportsCenter. You get Scott Van Pelt on the phone and tell him to. Da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> it's going to be third and five. As we approach three minutes left in the third quarter. It's going to be trailed. He's going to be close to getting sacked. 
gets out of it, and he might be enough for a first down. Hicks, and it's going to be about a, it's going to be fourth and inches. 58 Scott Pearson in pursuit for the Panthers. Well, now they're going to mark it back. It's going to be about fourth and a yard now. And it looks like they're keeping their keeping the offense on the field. And I don't see why not. They Two and down a half 78. minutes. Let's see if they can convert on this fourth down. Hicks bobbles the snap and falls on it. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. And Springboro is going to take over with excellent starting field position. 89 Spangler on the play for the Panthers. And the Springboro offense will take over. First and 10 from the Beaver Creek 24. Well, now this Springboro offense is going to be starting right there on the Beaver Creek's 24. Virtually knocking on the door of the red zone right here. It's Under two like minutes left in the third quarter, and Apple's going to be back out there. So that means Feldman's going to be on the next offensive drive for the Panthers. Case is going to get the carry right up the middle. Case blows through, and he will be tackled at about the nine, and that is actually not Case. It's 35. Flynn. Nathan Flynn. As he brings Springboro into the red zone as they're knocking on another touchdown. And it's first and goal, Springboro from the six. Springboro is going to look back to the coach. Apple's going to go out, line up in shotgun with Flynn behind him. Flynn's going to get the carry right up the middle, and Flynn's going to walk middle, in untouched from Panthers. eight yards out. And That's going to push the score the to 76 to eight. Touchdown. It looked like he was going to be taken down there, but he just eluded those two defenders. You hear the Beaver Creek. Fans are getting a little bit restless with the coaching decisions going on by Beaver Creek. I apologize if you hear any language. As the pour is on to kick another extra point. Kick is up and kick is good. Extra point kick is good by number 27. And with a minute to go, third quarter, the Panthers increase their lead. And Jared, how how far do you think Springboro is going to increase this lead before the game ends? I I think Springboro is looking to put points on the board every drive. Uh, they're not trying to. I don't. It it doesn't seem like it's intentional that they're just not going out there and sitting on the ball. But some coaches feel that way. You, you don't want me to score a touchdown. Stop me. Some people might take it as bad sportsmanship, but. You're, at this point, you're getting in the second and third string players. I mean, True. Flynn's not out there to in the starting lineup for the Panthers, and he just got his first touchdown of the season. Very true. And it's not like you can tell these second and third string guys, like, hey, guys, just go out right, there. Right, just go out there and just go through the motions, but don't score. No, they're on the field on Friday night. They want to play some football that they're not used to playing. To pour on to kick off. I think it's like the 13th kickoff he's done today. And he doesn't look tired at all. No, that's not the pour. That's number 27. That's a squib kick up the middle, fielded and bobbled at the 20, and pushed out of bounds at about the 28. He said that was actually who? Number 20 or 27. Knocked out of bounds by number 45. That wasn't the pour on the kick. That yeah, might have been Graham Garwood. From their own 28 yard line. But I think DePore's had a nice night. 14 touchbacks and was that 11 extra points? 
Yeah, I mean, it is 11 extra points as Springboro has scored 11 touchdowns. And now you see Barnett back into the game, and that pass is incomplete at the sideline. And now you get into the game. For number eight, the defense Hopkins might want to score. You don't get to see a lot of defensive scores. Defense isn't going to take it easy. They're going to come out there, and they're going to try and force a turnover, maybe get a touchdown in their favor. As we approach, and that will be the end of the third quarter. Springboro up 77 to eight over the visiting Beaver Creek Beavers. So I mean, Beaver Creek, you're out there. You're, you're basically, you're getting a quarter of practice here for next week. I don't know who Beaver Creek plays, but Beaver Creek's gonna have to go back to the drawing board for this week in practice and figure out what they can do. I mean, granted, Nobody thought that this offensive onslaught was going to come from Springboro, but uh, I, I think I know exactly what Beaver Creek needs to do is they just need to, that offensive line for them just really needs to step up. And they have been doing that a little bit better, but it's just, it's hard for this running to find holes and to gain, get some gains when your offensive line doesn't create them for you. And even with passing too, if you let that defensive line just get to your quarterback quickly, it's, it's very hard for him to set his feet and find a receiver and make a good pass. So if you can just fix those two things, you might have something going for you. Now we have Beaver Creek at the 28, trying to make some progress downfield. Second and 10, Barnett back to pass. Almost hit as he threw, and that one's intercepted by Leach. Or no, that's Heisner. Oh, that is Leach. He's still on his feet. And he's still on his feet, and he's down to the 10. And actually, my apologies, that is Coy, not Leach. Not his Coy's second interception of the game. And that is Barnett's third interception of this game. Nathan Coy with the interception. Nathan Coy, I believe that's Coy's second uh, interception uh, of the game. That is, yeah. And that is the third Brown interception for Springboro's defense line. tonight. And the Panthers are already in the And like we said at the beginning of this zone. game, the Beer defense needed to force turnovers, and they have. Yes. Forced turnovers, forced a lot of three and outs. And like we said, this Beaver Creek team has had to punt the ball a lot. Now the Springboro offense is heading out there, already in the red zone, and now it looks like they're let oh, out there. Oh, they're going to get a penalty right here against them. I don't, I don't think they saw that the play clock was down to. Delay, offense, first down. And now it looks like this offense is going to be led by number 15, Evan Ruzzo. Third quarterback of the night for the Panthers. I mean, you are up 77 to eight, so why not let anybody get a hold of that football? Might see the freshman team come out, get some work in in the varsity situation. I do not know what grade Russo is in. Russo is going to run right up the middle. Russo inside the 10, almost down to the five. Russo on the quarterback keeper up the middle. He's inside the 10. Yeah, Ru the Springboro rosters doesn't have their grade on there, but I don't, I haven't seen Ruzo before on the roster. At the of that pile for Creek. And it looks like the Springboro's offense has down. has a lot of new numbers out there we haven't seen tonight. This is probably the JV team, and they're getting some work for Saturday morning's game. And Russo, oh, lowers his shoulder, and he's still on Ruzo his feet, pushed out of bounds at the two. And that's going to put Springro, it looks like the two yard line is their first, third and goal out of bounds. It'll be third down at the two, the or at the four. Let's see if they can cash this touchdown in. Off the Coy interception. Let's see if Beaver Creek's defense can make a stop here. Oh, 
Ruzo under er, in shotgun. He's going to hand it off right up the middle, and that one's going to be close. The I'm going to say it's fourth down at the half yard line. I believe he said that was Art was the ball carrier. And he's tackled by number 46. Now it being fourth and one, I say just go for it here. I mean, you got nothing to lose and give these young kids a little taste of Friday night action and get that first touchdown in their young careers. So it looks like that ball was placed at the two or one or two it's, yard it's line. Maybe at the half yard line. So, I mean, Ruzo could just run right up the middle. As you see, Arndt is going to be in the backfield with him. Receiver in motion. And Ruzo keeps it. And that fourth down is going to be a turnover on downs. And this is the first possession that Springboro has had all night where it did not end in a touchdown. The stop for Beaver Creek. And Springboro turns it over on downs. And the Beaver Creek offense will take over first and 10. First and 10 at the five. Now, I don't really know what that play call was, but I mean, if you're right there at the at the goal line, you just got to punch that right in. Why not bring in Arm Brewster for his fifth touchdown of the game? <laughs> just to get the exclamation mark on this game. Maybe the coach is just trying to pull a, pull a play that they usually don't use in practice and just try it out. <laughs> Run's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Etchen with the handoff or the run there. <laughs> it looks like they still have Barnett out there for the Beaver Creek. Harrison moved him down the field a little bit when he had the ball. Now his, this is where you, you got the backup defense and you got the backup linebackers and corners and all that. They don't see the field much. This is where Barnett has to not throw a high pass as Aiton's going to get the run here again. He might have a first down. Aiton again, the ball carrier. He's across the 15. And it does. He does he get the first down. And there's about seven minutes left in this fourth quarter. As that time is still ticking off the clock. Five lane, Howard making the tackle. Howard First with the tackle there for the Panthers. The Barnett's going to hand it off to Aiton again. He's still pushing his way. Referees stop. Again, the ball carrier, he pals, it looks pals like he got about maybe four five yards. or six, four, four yeah, yards there. Out to the 20, so yeah, it'll be second and about five four, second and five. By number 50, Tyler Rackett. Rackett with the tackle there for the Panthers. Now it looks like Beaver Creek's just going to keep running that ball and just probably taking time off the clock to end this one. And right Barnett's going to go that, back to pass, it. and it's a wide open reception, and he is going to be tackled at about the 40, but a huge play there for the Beavers. Hawker, number 14, Doyle. Hawker with the pass there. That's the punter. The punter in there, quarterback now. And that was the that was the biggest play we've seen from the Beaver Creek's passing game all night. First down inside Panther territory. Are you sure that was their punter at QB, or is that? It was Hawker, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, see, look, there he goes, number seven, back out onto the field. I guess that kid can do it all. We've seen him pick up the first down on a fourth and 12 punt run earlier that I don't think was supposed to happen, but. Who would know that we'd be saying the punter's name most of the night? Hawker's pass goes out to Terrell, and Terrell slips and tackled at about the 40. Oh, we said his name quite a bit tonight. Should have chose him as my key player to watch. Tackle made by number 35, Flynn. He was the most common name we said tonight, him and Barnett. No gain on the play, it'll be second down and 10 from the 41. Let's see if he can lead this Beaver Creek offense to another first down. 
Hawker in. That's a deep shotgun formation, and he's going to. Oh no, Actually, that was that's a, Hicks. That was Hicks. He has a big run to the outside. He stays on his feet and tackled at the 17. Another big play from this Beaver Creek offense as they're marching down the field looking for a, their second touchdown of the game. Tackle made by number 49, Peyton Schrimmel. Schrimmel with the tackle there for the Panthers. For the Beaver Creek Beavers inside the 20 yard line. Call it the 18. They're in the red zone for the second time tonight. Hicks gonna roll to the left. Gonna stop and throw it in the middle of the field. Hauled in, and it is a touchdown for the Beavers. Number 85. Gabe Phillips with a touchdown. I believe that's Phillips' second touchdown. I think he had the first one too. And that makes the score 77 to 14. Let's see if they'll go for two again. Why not? True. And it looks like they are setting up that weird formation. Yeah, but Hawker got the ball this last time and ran it right up the middle. I don't think Springboro's defense is. CJ Crawford on to attempt the extra point. Hawker to hold. And Hawker's going to run right up the middle. And Hawker flips it back out to the kicker and he's in for two. It's good. A two point conversion for Beaver Creek. That's how you draw up the extra uh, surprise two point play. 3.31 to go, fourth quarter. Three, three and a half minutes left in the ball game. Beaver Creek making some noise here late in the game. Is there about 3.30 left in this fourth quarter? I think we'll see a squib kick here out of Beaver Creek, maybe try and catch the Panthers off guard. I mean, why not? Just try something. I mean, you got three minutes left in this game. You mean, you're down by a lot. So, I mean, just try to have fun out there and make the most out of it. Yeah, have fun on Friday nights. Beaver Creek out to kick off here for the fourth time tonight. Arm Brewster and Case back deep to receive the kick. Arm Brewster and Case still out there to receive the kickoffs for the Panthers. He might he might be getting that fifth touchdown if they do receive it here. Yeah, if they don't, if they squib it and they have that kickoff return for a touchdown like they did the last time, I think that was Coy. I believe it was, yeah. Either Coy or Flynn. Yeah, they there you go again. 47 for the oh and a stiff arm returns that one out to about yeah, the 40 yard line. 47. 47. Messinger. Messinger there with the return for the Panthers. And let's see if this uh, this young group that Springboro's head coach is going to send out there see if they can make some noise as they don't get to see much action on Friday nights here as they're used to playing on Saturdays. Yep, Russo leading the offense out there with 2.51 left in this fourth quarter. As Springboro is up 77 to 16. Late add on there for the Beavers on defense. Russo is going to hand it off in an end around. Sam Brown has the hold of the edge, and he might have got pushed out of bounds, but might have enough for the first down for Springboro. It looks like he uh, got about Sam maybe Brown. six yards on about that. About a six-yard game, but the far ref looked like he marked it out further. That makes it second and four here for Bruzo and his Springboro offense. Space with the tackle there for the Beavers. And I'm going to guess that the Springboro offense is just going to keep running the ball here to just take that time off the clock. As Sam Brown hands the ball again, and he's taken down in the backfield by number. Let's see here. I can't read it. 
Again, it's Brown, the ball carrier. 83. Like 93, Brent Couch. 93, uh, actually, Brent Couch, Couch on the tackle in the backfield, and that now leads to the Springboro offense to third and eight. Under two minutes left here in the our game, MVCC game of the week for week number two. Let's see if they might pass it here just to keep that drive going. Third and eight. And it looks like Bruzo's gonna run right up the middle. And he actually might have enough Bruzo for a first down it's there. It's gonna be close. Might be fourth and one. The and they're going to give it to him. That's going to be a first down run for Ruzzo on third and eight. First down for the Panthers. There's about one minute left in this quarter. At the 50. And I bet Springboro is just going to let the clock tick down as they already know they've won this game by a wide margin. And take this confidence into next week, like you said, against Miamisburg, which will we be covering? So we'll, we're going to have a chance to cover Ryan Wilhite's 100th win. So the handoff there Again, goes to Brown, the, the ball carry. Brown, and it's going to be about field. a two-yard loss. A loss of about two yards on the play. And now, if Springboro doesn't want to, they do not have to hike it. And they probably won't. And that one is going to, oh, no, actually there's an injured player on the field. Timeout on the field. And if folks, if you are squirmish, it looks like there's a gruesome injury. That looked like a Joe Theismann injury. Or Alex Smith last year for the Red Washington football team. But that one is going to hurt and the refs are going to just wind the rest of this clock, and that one is going to do it here. Springboro is going to win 77-16 to over the Beavers. Springboro is going to get a notch on the victory, go to 1-1, one and, one, and they will face the Miamisburg Vikings next week. That will be one of our MVCC Game of the Weeks for week number three. Remember, stay up to date with us on social media. First updates all season long. Signing off for the rest of Miami Valley Communications crew. I'm Jared Bergstrom alongside Lucas Smith. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.